<laughs> Prepare to see the minions like never before as we uncover 10 instances where these mischievous characters went beyond kid-friendly antics. From subtle adult humor to clever references, get ready for a deep dive. Let's start with Gru's relationship with his mother, shall we? Gru, <laughs> Joe. Believe it or not, the first Despicable Me film was released in 2010. That was 14 years ago. Back then, most of us were just innocent kids, and watching the franchise then was a different experience. If you go and watch the first Despicable Me film now, you'll realize there are a lot of things in the movie that are not just for kids. And all we noticed back in 2010 was how love and kindness can turn a villain into an affectionate father, and of course, we love the colorful design and the adorable minions. But seeing it through older eyes, well, you realize hundreds of questionable actions, plot holes, weird relationships, and evil characters seemed fine before. When it comes to relationships, the creators made sure to make Gru and his mother's relationship complicated enough that some adult audiences would find it relatable. <laughs> Gru has no chance of having a healthy relationship with his mother. She's always cruel to him, and she always has called him different names, never allowing him to follow his dreams of going to the moon. And he did it. But even though he managed to go to the moon, his mother was not proud of him. No matter what Gru does, she will never stop criticizing him, and nothing will ever be enough. At one point, she even says that his father died of disappointment when he was born. This mother-son storyline hit It's harder when you think about it as an adult. But wait, are the minions killers? Yeah, they are. They killed their bosses before they met Gru, and we often choose to ignore this quite important storyline. It's been stated multiple times that the minions love nothing more than serving their evil bosses, and they've had a lot of bosses before, but all of their leaders have died because of them, because of the mistakes they made while trying to keep their leaders. In one instance, they showed a vampire the sun, then they told a caveman to fight a bear with a fly swatter. Do you remember the scene when they send a T-Rex into a volcano? Hopefully, they won't do something to Gru in the fourth installment, which is set to be released in 2024. Now I have to ask, have you ever thought about Miss Hattie and how she's actually the villain? Hello, girl. Hmm, let me think. No. Edith. Miss Hattie is one of the worst characters in the franchise, despite the franchise never describing her as the villain. Just a quick reminder, Miss Hattie is the orphanage caretaker in the first installment. I believe most kids don't even pay attention to this character, but adult audiences know that she is in fact an awful human being. First of all, she sends all of those poor kids on the street alone to sell boxes of cookies door to door. Isn't that child labor? It's also quite dangerous. What about the box of shame? When a child doesn't sell enough cookies, she puts them in a cardboard box. What's worse is that she keeps them there for days. Oh, and I almost forgot, she basically gives three children for adoption to a strange man simply because he flirted with her. What is up with that storyline? Now, let's talk about the Mona Lisa and the Starry Night. This detail here made me question some things about the Despicable Me movies. The creators of the franchise included two very popular paintings in the background of Gru's home. On the wall of his adoptive daughter's room, you can see Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night can be seen wedged in a corner. How do you guys think those paintings ended in Gru's house? Share your theories in the comments before we continue with Gru's crimes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gru starts off the Despicable Me journey as a villain. He is, after all, the bad guy, and we didn't really think about this back in 2010. But adult fans of the franchise have pointed out that Gru doesn't really pay for his criminal acts. Yeah, karma does its thing, but the police have never actually made an attempt to arrest Gru for his crimes. Why? Well, I guess we'll never know. I mean, he even stole the freaking moon. And police did nothing. I guess he lives in a different universe. One where police don't really care about random people stealing the moon or doing crimes in broad daylight. Stay tuned as we reveal more surprising moments that may have flown under the radar for our younger viewers. There's plenty more to cover, so keep watching watching all the minion madness. My favorite character in the entire franchise is without a doubt, Agnes. If you think about it, Agnes's story is painful.
unicorns, her sisters, and her dad. That's what Agnes loves in the first film of the franchise. Both kids and adult viewers love the characters because she's a little girl obsessed with unicorns. But if you watch the movies now, you'll realize that her backstory is heartbreaking. All she wants to do in the first film is share the love she has. Some of the things she says are quite painful, especially when she looks for a mom in the second installment. I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried a lot when she gave that speech at Gru and Lucy's wedding. Now, let's talk about something more positive. I don't even have a mom. Well, you don't need one to do the show. The Minions are speaking a real language. Honestly, I had no idea that the Minions are speaking a real language. I don't know about you, but the words they're saying sound like gibberish to me. Interestingly enough, the creators use gibberish and real-life language to come up with this fictional tongue. More precisely, they borrowed some words and phrases from many real languages. The language they came up with is called Minionese, and it actually features English words such as banana and potato. The fictional language also borrowed the Russian words da, meaning yes. Then there's the Chinese word for cheers, the Spanish word for wedding, and the Indonesian expression meaning thank you. Next on our list is the Bank of Evil. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. The Bank of Evil is one very interesting antagonist. A lot of people were able to relate to Gru's money struggles and his whole interaction with this bank. Although the Bank of Evil is not a real bank, it does remind us of all the real banks in the world. Interestingly enough, if you look at the bank's entrance, you'll notice statues of men being crushed by huge columns. This is obviously a metaphor for the burden of debt. Then you'll notice that on the bank's front doors, there's a sign that reads, formerly Liam Brothers. Liam Brothers Inc. was an American global financial services firm founded in 1850 that filed for bankruptcy in 2008. Kids would never get this reference. We'll have to go back a little bit and discuss. Someday I'm going to go to the moon. Oh, I'm afraid you're too late, son. NASA isn't sending the monkeys anymore. Gru's heartbreaking journey a bit more. The villain turned hero, Gru, has been through so many struggles in his life. As mentioned before, his mother is very cruel to him, often making his life harder. This is just part of why Gru has always tried to prove himself to others. He went so far as to steal the moon, not only his mother, but most people around him told him that he would never ever manage to be successful at anything. And in the second installment, Gru is again forced to prove himself to others when the AVL doesn't believe that the villain with the PX-41 serum was El Macho. In the third installment, history repeats itself when he joins the AVL, and he needs to prove himself again by capturing Baltheiser Brad. <laughs> 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 Sometimes Gru doesn't care about his minions. Don't get me wrong, I know he loves the minions more than anything in the world, but sometimes it seems like he really doesn't care about them. It's contradictory, but it's true. In the second film, the minions are kidnapped by Dr. Nefario and El Macho. Gru didn't even notice the minions were missing until most of them were gone, and he wasn't even concerned at the beginning. He was just angry that there was no one there to do his work for him. He assumed the minions had gone on vacation without checking anything else. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of the Minions misadventures. If you enjoyed learning about these unexpected moments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into your favorite animated films. See ya. Yeah, yeah.